guys, I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms and I want to welcome you all back to my channel. Now in today's video, I did a DIY for resale. So I had seen a picture out on Pinterest, which really inspired me. Uh, and it was all these really like old vintage rosettes, um, all different colors and obviously like years of paint and things like that. So I thought, how can I replicate something like that? And uh, to find something like that is very hard to come by in our area anyway. And so I decided to use the new molds or the fairly new mold set from IOD called Rosettes. And I always save all my lumber. <laughs> like if I have scraps at the end, um, if I'm cutting a board, I save it. And so I had a bunch of little chunks of wood. I cut them down to make them perfect, a three and a half by three and a half. And I created my own little vintage rosettes. So this is my first attempt. I want to hear what you guys all think. What was your favorite? I do have a favorite and I'll let you know at the end. But um, if you haven't been to my channel before, I am all about DIYs, furniture flips, thrift hauls, thrift flips, really a day in the life of a small business owner. And uh, if that is the type of channel that you do like, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Turn on that bell notification so you will be notified every Monday and Friday when I upload a video. And if you like today's video, give me a thumbs up and let me know at the end what your favorite was. Here is the new mold that I was talking about, rosettes. So you can see all the different patterns on here. It is so cool and I love all the detail. Uh, you can come up with so many ideas to use this mold for. So what we're going to do, uh, like I said, um, we had a bunch of scrap lumber laying around. And these were like the ends of some project. So I grabbed uh, around six pieces and I cut them into three and a half by three and a half. And these are one by fours. And uh, here I'm just showing you, it's like, even though they're considered considered one by fours. Uh, they are three and a half inches wide. So I cut them into three and a half by three and a half. And from there, we are going to start creating our uh, rosettes. So we're going to take um, the, and I'm just showing you here how they fit perfect right on these tiny little boards. So we're going to take the IOD mold and we are also going to use the IOD air dry clay and in that inside the mold you do need to use cornstarch so we're gonna dust the mold with cornstarch so the air dry clay does come out fairly easy and the other thing that you're gonna need for this project is the tight bond uh, glue. So it is called Type Bond Thick and Quick. And I have used this since I started using uh, the molds and the air dry clay. And let me tell you, it works amazing. Uh, none of the pieces have fallen off. It, it, it's got a really nice hold. So to start the project, like I said, we're going to just dust the um, whatever ones we're going to use, whatever molds, we're just going to dust with the cornstarch. And I just dust them all right away. Now, I didn't want to use any of those really tiny uh, rosettes. I just more or less wanted to use the bigger ones and then the medium size. I'm going to just take my air dry clay and I fill in the, the actual mold and then I use my thumb and I just pull off any of the excess. I do know some people use um, like one, like a transfer stick to, to um, you know, swipe it. Um, I tend to use my thumb and it works out really well. Uh, I then just go around. Um, the nice thing about the IOD molds is it does have this micro rim around it and it makes it very easy to get a perfectly flat bag. And I'm going to do this for all the molds that I am going to um, use. 
So this whole process really doesn't take that long. And I go in and uh, like I said, I try to do as many as I can at one time. I try to, when I do a project and um, I try to do like an assembly line. So I cut all my boards, I m use all the molds or I make all the molds and I set them all out. Uh, and then I will go ahead and I will glue them all. Um, but you can see I start off with all the larger ones first and then I start off with the medium ones. And I want all different, um, just make it look very different. And here's just a different view of how easy that comes out of the mold, the air dry clay, because of that cornstarch. It just, you use gravity um, on your side and you tip it and then it just pops right out. The detail on these molds are just phenomenal. And I give those IOD sisters so much credit. They just come up with the best products. And I, you know, I started offering or selling these products because I fell in love with them. And uh, the products are amazing. So someone had said, well, you always are using IOD. And it's because I love them. And not just because I sell it, but because I really do love using it and I use it in all my own DIYs. So now we are going to use the Type Bond Quick and Thick and I think I said it wrong the first time but this is so easy to use. Uh, the one thing I do recommend is um, I realized very quick that I had to cut the top off in order to make it come out which I didn't realize I never thought I had to do that before. Um, but I just cut that top off and the process is so simple. I just squirt a little bit um, in the center and then what I do is I just take my finger and I rub uh, the whole, um, all the glue in the center and then I slightly um, bring it to the edge. I don't want too much on the edge because when you lay down the actual mold, you don't want a whole bunch of glue gushing out because then you have to clean it up. Um, it just doesn't look pretty when there's dried glue outside of the mold. So I just try to get the most in the middle and then just swipe out to each edge so there's enough glue. Um, I also, what I recommend is I have a piece of paper towel set aside. So once I lay down the mold, I have my fingers still full of glue or some excess glue. I wipe it off on the paper towel and uh, just to, so then I can put the mold and work with the mold to press it down. So again, here I'm just showing it um, how I do this. And the key here is once you get the mold on your object, I start in the center and I don't put a ton of pressure, but I just enough to like make sure it sticks. And then I go around to the edge and I make sure that there's no excess of the glue. And then I just take with a very light touch, I go around and I make sure the entire edge of the mold is firmly pressed down and in place. So you can see there's complete um, adhesion for the whole bit. And then I just work my way and go to the next one. And this whole process doesn't take very long either. Once I get the glue all done, I let these sit and typically I let them sit overnight so that they completely dry. That way we can paint them and do whatever we are, want to do to the mold. And that's with any project because if you start painting and using waxes, you will distort all the, the features in that mold. What I did here is I actually took them and I put them outside for a couple hours in the sun and they dried really well. So um, I, I allowed nature to help me. So from there, I took Apothecary and I painted 
three of the rosettes apothecary and when i painted them i painted the fronts and the sides let those dry went back and i painted the back side the next set i used dark and decrepit and i did the exact same thing except on the front i did go back uh, and apply a second coat just to give it a little bit more um, just to make it a little bit darker on the third set i used vintage linen and again, I uh, applied just one coat on all of uh, the, the actual DIY paint. And then the third set, I used faded burlap. And I, again, applied just one coat on there. I let these all dry. And then I went back and I sanded them with my uh, electric sander. And I just distressed the edges and distressed on the fronts slightly. So here you can see how I distressed it. I just wanted to give it a little bit of an aged look. Um, I am then going to use the DIY clear wax and I am going to apply clear wax to just the ones I painted with the DIY paint. Uh, the one thing that after I, I might, uh, the actual dark and decrepit has a sealer like it's basically a sealer right in it and i thought that i did not need to apply any wax to that but when i applied the white wax it really absorbed a little bit more than i had wanted it to so i might have i might suggest if you didn't want it that much of the white wax to adhere to it to either apply like a clear coat or to apply the white or the clear wax as well. Um, that is just a suggestion. I, I didn't do it. So, but again, I really like how the white wax went on for the dark and decrepit. I just, just a little tip. So um, it just took me a little bit and I went through and I applied the, the clear wax to all the pieces. And from here, then I'm going to take the first row. So one of the apothecary, one of the dark and decrepit, the vintage linen and faded burlap. And I am going to apply the white wax. And I want these all to look a little different. And I wanted to see which ones I liked best. And um, something that I might try to do in the future um, is apply several layers of uh, paint. So, um, and then kind of chip it back or, um, you know, make it look a little bit chippy and sand some of it back or wipe some of it back. Uh, so that might be something I do, but I'm really loving how the white wax picks up all the detail in these rosettes. The one other uh, recommendation I or I do recommend when you're using any of the DIY products, you don't want to dip into either the DIY paint or the waxes because you can contaminate it. Uh, DIY paint is all natural, so I do recommend you take like a spoon or something to pull the wax out, separate it, use what you need, um, but don't put it back. Just um, have it outside of the container. And I do recommend that for the paint as well. I go through my paint so quick, I have not had a problem um, with that. Sometimes it can, uh, I've heard, um, develop like a foul smell. It's still fine to work with uh, and the smell goes away, um, but there must be some like type of bacteria in it. So that's why it's recommended to take out what you need, um, even like those little clear plastic containers. Um, you can get them at Sam's. There's like a little, I think you can put like restaurants use them to put um, condiments in. So that might be something to consider putting them in something like that with a little plastic lid um, or even like a little Rubbermaid container. Uh, but again, I am loving how all of um, these pieces turned out with the white wax. Next, we are going to use the dark wax. And uh, the reason too that I put the clear wax on prior to using either the white wax or the dark wax, it is so much easier to manipulate those uh, waxes that have like a color in it. Um, sometimes if you just apply it direct, 
it can be too dark or too white. So uh, by having the clear on there, it's very easy to wipe back. Um, if you have too much dark in an area, you can just apply a little bit more clear and wipe more of that dark off. And I love how all these pieces are turning out. So the last thing we are going to use is the shipwrecked turquoise uh, wax. And this is so cool, this wax. And I thought this would be really fun uh, just to, it just reminded me of vintage. So I thought I'm going to try that and see what that looks like. And I think it these turned out really, really cool. I am absolutely loving um you know, the, the, well, turquoise is one of my favorite colors, so I'm kind of biased, but I love all the turquoise on all the different color palettes. So here they are. What do you guys think? I'm really loving how they all came out looking so different depending on which of the waxes I used. Uh, I just love all the detail in these molds and like I said next time I am going to try to layer some paints and see how that works. So what was your favorite? I definitely wanted to try to use all the different waxes. Um, I really like the waxes, the white wax. So um, I just thought it really brought out a lot of the detail. Although the dark wax that I used definitely made it look really old. Now I had not, when I had did the video and taken the photos and things like that, um, it had not completely dried because, um, as many of you know, if you've been following along, I am prepping to leave to go to Creative Con, and I definitely wanted to get a video out. Um, we we're coming off of a Memorial Weekend, and uh, just life has been crazy busy, which is great. I love busy, uh, but uh, I right to the end, and I am actually on the way to see my daughter play her softball tournament. But uh, prior to that, um, I had a few moments. I was going to do my intro, outro, and just wrap this video up and by the time you're watching it I will be in Florida North Florida um, not in southern Florida where that hurricane is hitting so I'm hoping we don't get too much rain and it will be pretty sunny um, but I cannot wait to bring you guys along for that I plan on doing a lot of video taping and uh, just kind of like a vlog while I'm there. So I uh, look forward to showing you that video in the future. And if you like today's video, like I said, give me a thumbs up and I can't wait to hear what your favorite rosette was. All right. Well, you guys have a great week and we will see you guys Friday. Bye.